Hello dear creative friends! In this free class I will show you how I create a collage on a round canvas and share my top 10 tips when it comes to color, texture, composition and storytelling. So let's get started. I like to start by selecting my images and pre-arrange them. So when I select my images, I like to have a mixture of shiny and rough surfaces of vibrant and muted colors, cool and warm tones. You can see those little paint pots here. They act as my color palette, my inspiration for color. And also this main focal image that I chose of this girl. They are also um, the same colors in her bag, her bikini top and those are guiding me in terms of the colors I want to use. Um, I have um, already put down like scrap papers, pieces of images and papers and some stickers that I want to use. And um, I pre-arrange all the elements on my canvas before I glue anything down. And I have like this stack of paper, some um, scrap paper, some scrapbooking paper and also what I really love to work with some pages from old books, music sheet and so forth. And here um, you can see, this is another tip, I don't cut the paper that I use but I tear the edges. I really like that it's a much more organic feel. And now I'm trying to find what goes in those uh, empty spaces that I still haven't filled with paper. And I really like this warm tone on the left, the writing on the paper. Very important is the contrast of vibrant colors and bold patterns like on this flower on the right. And then contrasting it with something that is smaller in size, more muted in colors. I really like the combination and the contrast between um, abstract and figurative images, writing, lettering, um, black and white, or just vintage, vintage touch of this coffee stained colors. And I'm, don't, I'm not using scissors. As you can see, one of the big tips is tearing the paper. Now for storytelling, I actually have a little quote and I'm going to use it also as a little bit of a guidance for my collage. It just inspires me to have some text and words sometimes, although I mainly work just with getting the inspiration from the images I work with. So here's my next tip. Take a picture of the composition when you feel everything is in the right position. I take a picture because it helps me to remember the composition after, you know, now I want to recreate it, now I want to rebuild it and glue it down piece by piece. And also taking a picture helps me to look at the collage in a different perspective. I can see better what is missing if something needs to be added or placed somewhere else and it gives me the bigger picture so to speak and now I can start gluing the elements down and here's already my next tip don't glue down everything completely yet because you want to work in layers that means you want to overlap so here you see again why it's really helpful to have torn edges and not like straight, especially when you work on a round canvas. And don't worry about the paper overlapping the edge of the round canvas. We will cut that off later in the end. So for now I start actually um, on one corner. Here's another tip. Don't put everything in the middle. 
but I like to place my focal image most of the time a little bit off center. And you can see now I don't put glue on the edges yet because I want to be able to place elements behind that figure or behind that element and really um, have the images or the paper scraps overlap and it gives the visual of layering papers and images and um, elements they seem to like grow out of the other one that's in front of it or behind it so here again I haven't put glue on the edges yet so that I can lift up this magazine image and place another paper underneath and only then I glue down, glue down the, the element completely and so here for example with the hand I have to lift it up again because I want to place another scrap another piece of scrap paper underneath so it's very important to not glue everything down immediately so here I'm filling out this little empty blank space with something neutral to give a nice background basically for the girl um, and while I put the collage together I still play a lot with the composition doesn't have to end up exactly like the composition that I had in the beginning even if I took a picture of it I might still change it I love to just play around and here I feel inspired by this little piece from a magazine that has the same colors as my paint pots and that really matches the colors of the image of the girl the focal image so I'm deciding spontaneously and intuitively to add this piece here and makes her stand out a little bit more so the tip is to intuitively look for elements and images and colors that go well together don't have too many bold images or bold colors and patterns because they will compete with each other and will compete for attention so that's why it's easiest to have one focal image and then maybe one or two more where you have the same repeating colors or movement or patterns or just a theme just that creates a similar feeling and then the rest is more muted colors and different textures that creates contrast and at the same time brings in harmony and, and balance. So always play first with the composition. It can take sometimes a lot of time to move things around until you find this is the right spot and only then you glue it down and remember the pieces that will stick out and go beyond the edge of the canvas will be cut off later so just keep that in mind and again the variation of size some larger images some smaller ones also with the lines I see do, if I repeat a certain shape or a certain line I can create movement and bring more dy dynamic into the collage and I also vary with the color of the paper I like to have paper that is a bit more like for example these pages from the book um, I have several different books some pages are older so the paper is a little bit more yellow so it is more warm toned and then there are some that are just straight black and white and I make sure I don't use them all in one spot but I combine them and create an interesting and harmonious composition of 
warm and cool abstract and figurative text and image. Yes, and I uh, have some stickers here, some stamps, and I'm taking them off and placing them individually. Um, and again, like a little bit asymmetrical, not completely straight, uh, just playing around with where they belong, where they want to sit, where they look best. And another tip is to sometimes cluster things together, like in pairs of three, like I did here, two stems and this other image, uh, this other little piece of paper. Um, but then at the, again, at the same time, make sure not to put everything just in one spot. And here I have something like that's causing like a straight line. I have a lot of horizontal lines. So here I'm creating a horizontal that uh, also brings in some harmony and interest in terms of changing up the lines, vertical versus horizontal. And now I'm just filling in the last empty spaces around the edge of the collage. Again, with some layering, some overlapping, torn paper without harsh edges. quote doesn't have to be on there, it can just act as an inspiration, but I will find a place in the end. Here's another element, the butterfly, which also creates a nice contrast and just fits perfectly in that spot. I go very intuitively with where I place things, while in the background I'm aware about the balance between dark and lighter colors, larger images and smaller images, and bringing them into harmony on the canvas. Okay, so now it's time to trim the edges. I just turn the canvas around and I take some scissors. You can also do that by placing the canvas down and cutting very carefully around the canvas edges um, with a craft knife that sometimes is actually a little bit more accurate. Just take your time. and trim the edges. So now it's time to do a final check. For example, on the right um, side, right there, I feel there's something missing. It's a little bit plain. I would like some more visual interest there. But not definitely not color just some maybe some black and white something graphic so you can either look at the picture you can either take a picture again of this of the collage as it is so far at this point and then again you will see much more clearly what is missing or where you want to add something um, again also this needs a little bit of a different texture so I'm using this kind of transparent paper with some print on it and put it right there.
Okay, so now I can trim that edge as well. Turn around the canvas again, cut it off, or use a craft knife, an X-Acto knife. And I'm very happy with the composition. And now comes the final touch. As usual, I like to go back and just play a little bit with some colors. And I have here um, some acrylic paint and also I'm going to be using those little watercolor pots up there that you see. Sometimes I add, I work with a pencil, with colored pencils or with a stencil. In this case, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of contrast already. There's a lot of um, bright colors patterns and I'm not going to add anything like stencils even though you could but this part is where I completely just relax and I just love to also use my fingers and I'm just wanting, wanting to add a few touches of color that go with the colors in my collage in, in the images in the magazine image and I don't want to cover anything up with the paint, that's why I'm using some very fluid paint. It's really just about bringing some touches of color here and there. Very, very transparent, translucent and um, shimmering. Like I said, not covering anything. I want the texture to still come through, I want the text to be visible and I'm just playing at this point. I'm just completely going with my intuition. I'm just looking what are the colors, what are the complementary colors, what goes well there. Um, I like to work with pastels especially um, or metallics especially where there's a lot of bold color to to sometimes mute it a little bit like I'm doing here and this is just a really wonderful relaxing part of the entire process where I bring everything together and it's almost as if I'm connecting to the collage Of course, I have this gorgeous, these gorgeous colors that really match the color, especially of those beautiful purple magenta flowers. And that's also um, in the bikini top of the girl. So these are metallic watercolors and I use them also just sparingly translucent so that they just bring in a little bit of touch of color, a little bit of shimmer. And it's my way to bring everything together, to also bring together the different elements, bring them into cohesion, And I'm just such a lover of color. I just enjoy. This is very relaxing. While I'm working with the composition, I'm still doing a lot of um, thinking, let's say. Even though it's an intuitive process, I, I very much am in control of where I place the elements. And now I'm just having fun with the color. I also like to add color to the edge to create almost like a little frame for the collage, for the circle. And it doesn't have to be all one color. I'm using here two different colors, a darker purple and this gorgeous magenta. 
And of course, I could bring in more media. I could work with markers or acrylic pens and um, crayons and just continue embellishing the collage. So here are my tips again. I choose a main focal image and use that as the inspiration for the style and color of the entire collage. Or sometimes I just start with color as an inspiration, for example, from one of my paint pots. And then I look for a focal image that has the same colors. And I continue to go from there. Two. So once I have my focal image selected, I look for a couple more magazine images that go with the color and the style and the mood and the theme of this focal image. And I make sure I have a good mix of smooth and rough textures, surfaces, vibrant and more muted colors, cool and warm tones. I like to use a lot of um, bright, shiny magazine images and mix them with old paper, like rougher, muted, uh, matte paper, like pages from old books, for example. So um, make sure you have a nice mix of textures, colors, surfaces, and also variations in size. Three. Prearrange all the elements on the canvas and build a composition before start gluing to glue everything down. So I usually give myself time with the right placements, move things around, and once I have the composition mock up, so to speak, I then take everything off the canvas and start gluing down piece by piece. Four. Instead of cutting everything in straight lines with scissors, I prefer to tear the paper and the images from the magazines. This creates a nice organic feel that is more harmonious. 5. Think about a story you want to tell. You can either use a quote, cut out some text, uh, some words, or you just use your focal magazine image to inspire you and let it lead you in your storytelling. Six, once you're done with your layout, take a picture with your phone of the composition so you remember it and also get a bigger picture about what needs to change or to be added. Seven, don't apply glue to the entire piece of the paper when you start gluing your images down so that you can actually lift up the edges to place other elements underneath. And that leads me to tip eight, which is to work in layers. Layer the pieces, layer the papers, always playing with the edges of the torn paper and thinking about composition, overlapping and working in layers. Nine, add some finishing touches by adding color with paint, smudging, using your fingers, playing, and um, just bringing the whole piece together with a little bit of color. 10. Once the paint has dried, you can seal the surface by applying a layer of transparent gesso or Mod Podge. And here's the finished collage. I hope you enjoyed watching this process and that you could find some useful tips and I'm sure you are ready and really excited about creating a collage yourself now. And I also like to invite you to join my new exciting online course where we use intuitive collage as a creative self-discovery journey. You can find all the information on my website. I really hope to see you there. And for now, take care and happy creating.